WFSB, Connecticut's number one local news. This is Channel 3 Eyewitness News at 7. We start here with the latest on the coronavirus in Connecticut. The number of patients hospitalized with COVID-19 is down once again this morning. We know that 454 people are now being treated this morning. That's down 27 patients from the day before. The number of people who have died from the virus is nearing 4,000. More than 42,000 cases have been confirmed now in our state. Right now, it is getting even easier, though, to find out if you have COVID-19. Today in Hartford, you can get tested without an appointment, even if you're symptom-free. Channel 3's Roger Suzanne has more. Governor Ned Lamont hopes the days of long lines for COVID-19 tests will soon be in our rearview mirror. The state has hit an important milestone. Now every week, completely free testing sites will be available in cities like Hartford and New Haven, where patients can show up without an appointment, even if they are symptom free. The governor says testing is the key to protecting the community for a few reasons. First of all, folks who are sick need to be treated, isolated, and possibly hospitalized. But testing is also important because it will allow health officials in Connecticut to get a more accurate idea of the infection rate, which will help them orchestrate mitigation efforts and characterize the prevalence, spread, and contagiousness of COVID-19. Anyone with symptoms gets tested, no questions asked. Anyone who's had close contact with someone who tested positive get tested or self-quarantined. That's part of what contact tracing is all about. We'll let you know if you've been in contact with somebody who tested positive. We'll make sure you can get a test accordingly. Roger Suzanne, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. To a Three Cares event now, the need for masks in our state continues to be great. So we have another Three Cares event for you this morning. Scott Haney is live at Rentschler Field in East Hartford. Good morning, Scott. Morning, Eric. Yes, we have two nonprofits um, kind of marrying up together. We've got Mass for Connecticut, uh, started by Bob and Amy Stefanowski, and we've got Food Share. Now, Food Share has been here for seven weeks at Rentschler Field, giving out thousands and thousands, over a million pounds of food to people who are food insecure in the state of Connecticut. It's hard to believe in a state like this, we've got such a need for food, but we do. A lot of people are unemployed. They can't find the food. Uh, they can't afford the food. And now they are going to get free face masks as well. As you can see behind me, the cars started lining up as early as 4 or 5 o'clock this morning. And these people are either here to get masks, they're either here to get food, or they're here to get both masks and food. Now, if you just need a mask, you're going to roll through. Don't open your trunk and ask for the masks only. If you're here for both the masks and the food, you'll pop open your trunk, you'll get your food, and we'll throw the masks in the back seat of your car. It's a very well organized event. We'll be here till noon time today at Rentschler Field. Live with the early warning weather tracker in East Hartford, I'm meteorologist Scott Haney for Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Eric, back to you. Scott, thank you. We're finding some breaking news from overnight. A police officer in Las Vegas was shot amid protests over George Floyd's death. Police are currently investigating that shooting. It happened on Las Vegas Boulevard right near the Circus Circus Hotel and Casino. In addition, police are also investigating a second shooting involving a police officer also on Las Vegas Boulevard, that one near the federal courthouse. And four police officers in St. Louis were also shot after protests that started peacefully turned violent. Police say the officers are expected to recover. They were shot in the leg, foot, or arm, and right now it's unclear who fired those shots. New York City saw another night of destruction, including a break-in at the iconic Macy's store in Herald Square following protests over George Floyd's death. Mayor Bill de Blasio says an 8 p.m. curfew will take effect in the city tonight. And in Oakland, California, police used tear gas and rubber bullets to break up a crowd that was out demonstrating past the city's 8 p.m. curfew. Police say protesters have been throwing objects at officers there. President Trump is now threatening to send the military into U.S. cities to crack down on these protests. Here in Connecticut, there is a clash between the way President Trump wants governors to deal with the protesters and what our leaders are doing. The president wants governors to, quote, dominate the battlefield. But Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Carolina Cruz says something different is happening here. Hands up! Hands up! In Southington yesterday, the deputy police chief marched with the crowd. In Hartford, state police troopers joined demonstrators on I-84. Troopers were there to detour traffic and monitor the crowd. We hear sorry too much. To be sorry and to really mean it, you have to do something different. Protesters say they want these nonviolent moments to lead to actual change. President Donald Trump has different plans. If a city or state refuses to take the actions that are necessary to defend the life and property of their residents, then I will deploy the United States military and quickly solve the problem for them. 
Carolina Cruz, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. All right. Hello, everybody. I'm meteorologist Melissa Cole with your Channel 3 Early Warning Forecast. And we're talking about beginning of June, the first day of meteorological summer, first day of hurricane season, and also still gaining daylight. We'll take a look at the maps and show you that our sunrise today was at 517. The sun sets this evening at 821. That's 15 hours and four minutes of total possible daylight by the summer solstice, which happens on June 20th. That's the first day of summer. We're gaining an additional 12 minutes of daylight, so enjoy it. Also, some June extremes for you. 100 is our record high, and 37 is our record low, which we actually tied yesterday for that record low. Lots of clouds out there today. We are seeing sunshine early this morning, but clouds will increase. Chance for some late day or evening showers. Showers and thunderstorms possible again tomorrow. 56 degrees currently at West Haven. It is 48 in Plainfield at the 7 o'clock hour, 48 in Bristol, Winstead 47. Dew points are nice and low, so it feels very comfortable outside. I cam in New Haven, one of the warmer spots at 56. Winds right now are calm, and you can see we have clouds and some sunshine. Our I cam in Torrington shows partly cloudy sky. Looking nice there in our ICAM in New London, 52 degrees, northeast winds at 5 miles an hour. New London, you'll hold on to the sunshine the longest throughout the day today. Satellite and radar over the last six hours shows that we do have clouds on the way and also some showers. A lot of the showers you're seeing over New York and Pennsylvania are forecast to dissipate by the time they make it to Connecticut, but we are expecting a few to pop up as we go on through later today. You'll see that here on Futurecast as we go on through the timeline for today. Noontime, mostly cloudy skies. Between noon and six, again, clouds, some intervals of sunshine, and some pop-up showers, which will continue till about 10 o'clock tonight. We'll see a break in the action as some showers and thunderstorms slide to our south during the overnight. Tomorrow we wake up dry, partly sunny, and throughout the day tomorrow, again, pop-up showers and thunderstorms are a possibility. So for your highs today, we're going to top out between about 70 and 73 degrees across Connecticut. Clouds increase. Sunset tonight at 821. Tonight, mainly cloudy with a chance for some scattered showers, especially in northern Connecticut. 56 for an overnight low in Hartford, 59 New Haven, 58 in Norwich. Here's a check of your Channel 3 early warning seven-day forecast. Tomorrow, a high of 80, warmer, more humid, some showers and storms possible. Thursday, dry and sunny, a high of 83. Friday, 84 degrees with, again, some showers and storms possible. And those may linger into Saturday not a washout either day, but something we'll be watching. 81, 76 on Sunday, and 78 on Monday with drier air and cooler conditions to start out the second half of the weekend and early next week. That's your latest forecast. Send it back to you. Hi, Melissa. Thank you. Thank you for watching Eyewitness News. Remember, you can get news and weather updates anytime you want them on the Channel 3 app. I'm Eric Parker. Have a great day.